So I know the M1 MacBook Air has officially been discontinued, but it's still available from third parties as they clear existing stock. And so some of you guys might be wondering if you should get the M1 or pay the extra for the new M3. And I'm sure there's also those considering upgrading from your existing M1 to the new M3 MacBook Air. So let's discuss all of this in today's video. Beginning with the biggest change between these MacBooks, we have the overall design. In fact, that's probably the biggest selling point for the M3 because yes, it looks gorgeous and makes the M1 Air look relatively ancient in comparison. The new design really fits the Air branding because the M1 version, believe it or not, was thicker than the old 13 inch MacBook Pro, so the much thinner and lighter design of this new model is really quite nice. The smaller bezels are also appreciated, and I do forget the notches there most of the time, so it's not a massive issue for me. And also, I do want to mention the larger function row is a pretty underrated change because it does make the Touch ID sensor and the function row much easier to reach and press. The new design isn't perfect though, because as I said in my M2 MacBook Air review, I do miss the wedge. It did make the typing experience that much nicer and it was a unique design element that separated it from the rest of the range. And so it's sad the wedge is dead. And I do want to take a moment to give the M1S some credit because this design is still very premium. And for those coming from older laptops, there is still a lot to like here in my opinion. Most consumers I feel are still going to be very happy with the M1 MacBook Air's design. So let's now move on to the performance. And obviously we have the brand spanking new M3 chipsets in the M3 MacBook Air. Wow, what a surprise. And I won't bore you with benchmarks because everybody has already covered that in detail, but yes, this is a decent upgrade over the regular M1 and is actually on par with the M1 Pro chipsets we had in the first redesigned MacBook Pros, which is very impressive. However, when it comes to regular usage, you really can't tell much of a difference. And that really goes to show how monumental M1 was because even after three years of this being on the market, it can still run everything I need my MacBook to do without any issues. And remember, I'm doing 4K video editing on this and designing thumbnails alongside the usual mix of emailing, writing up documents and scripts, and also watching YouTube and movies. I feel like that's slightly more demanding than what most people do on MacBook Airs. So yeah, that goes to show how good M1 still is. Oh, by the way, for those wondering about throttling with these two fanless Macs, for my use, I've had zero performance issues. And if anything, I appreciate the fanless design because when I'm editing, I don't have to hear a stupid fan in the background. It's just pin drop silence, which is perfect. Now, if you're wondering whether the 24 gig option on M3 makes a difference, I personally doubt it. Now, I would still make the upgrade to 16 gigs if possible because that would help future-proof the machine. But even with the base model I'm using, I've noticed no RAM issues and I've been pushing this machine with multiple tabs and final cuts. Honestly, if you're maxing out a MacBook Air to 24 gigs of RAM, you're just better off getting a MacBook Pro instead. You know what you're also better off doing? Subscribing to the channel, of course. I would greatly appreciate it and I would give you the latest commentary about the world of Apple right to subscription box. So please consider it. The button is below. We're trying to hit our next milestone of 16,000 subscribers. So join the Saran Bike gang now. Anyways, back to the comparison. Let's talk about the display. And I'll be honest, guys, apart from it being bigger, the M3 Air's display is near identical to the M1. Now, that's not a bad thing per se, because the M1 Air still has a terrific display, but it does make me kind of sad the new MacBook Airs don't have mini LED like the Pros. By the way, I am aware the display is brighter on the new M3, but since I use my MacBooks indoors nearly all the time, I've really never had an issue with the brightness on the M1's panel. And frankly, that 0.3 inch increase in the display does not make that big of a difference. Really, the only thing I appreciate is, like I said, the thinner bezels. Now, moving to the camera mics and speakers, I would say they're about the same. Beginning with the webcam, I feel like many gas up the 1080p sensors on the new Macs, but I actually can't tell much of a difference between the high res FaceTime camera on these M3 models and the 720p FaceTime camera on the M1 Air. At the end of the day, it's a small sensor tucks behind a screen, and so I would suggest using your iPhone via continuity camera instead. 
the quality your iPhone produces will be miles ahead. The speakers also sound pretty similar, though I will mention the speakers on the M3 Air are not front firing like they are on the M1. There's no grills on the actual casing and so it's tucked behind the hinge. And so while the speakers do sound solid, I do slightly prefer the speakers on the older M1. However, do remember you get spatial audio with the new Air, which does make a difference when using AirPods. Mics wise, there really isn't a huge improvement. They're both very good in this department. And here's a sample for you guys. And here's a quick mic test and webcam test on the M1. So of course, let me know how this looks and sounds. And here's a webcam test for you guys. I should sound pretty good. The visuals should be decent enough. So yeah, let me know how this is. Keyboard wise, as I said, I do like the larger function mode, but this essentially is the same Magic Keyboard that we had on the M1. So that's to say it's the golden standards and the same goes for the trackpads. And in case you're wondering if Touch ID is faster on the M3, yeah, I did test this. I know that's not the case, though to be fair, the M1 sensor was already plenty fast. Now, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth wise, the M3 Air does offer newer Wi-Fi 6C and Bluetooth 5.3 standards, but there's not been a huge difference in this aspect in my testing. You do need a Wi-Fi 6C router anyways to access the high speeds, which I'm sure 90% of MacBook Air users don't have, including myself. But hey, I guess you could argue it does feature-proof the machine when this eventually becomes a de facto standard. Also, while I'm aware the M3 Air does support two external displays compared to one on the M1, this only works with the display closed. So I wouldn't say it's a massive advantage the M3 has. Moving to ports, I think the big upgrade with the M3 Air is MagSafe because right now with the M1 Air, I can make do with two ports, but it is nice I can now charge the Mac separately with the MagSafe ports and then use the two USB-C ports for peripherals. Also MagSafe has a very nice satisfying magnetic click and of course, if you trip on the wire, it doesn't send your MacBook flying across the room. Also remember that if you get the right brick, the M3 Air does charge faster, though to be honest, I couldn't care less about charging speed because the M1's never died on me. It does easily last a day and so I just charge it overnight and that conveniently brings me to battery life because in my limited testing, the M1 and the M3 do perform about the same, which is not a surprise considering they do offer the same 18 hours of Apple TV playback on Apple's comparison page. And so yeah, in my testing, I was editing on these Macs for two hours and they went from 100% to around 87%, which still blows my mind to be honest. Back when I was using a horrible Intel MacBook Pro, that thing would be close to dead once I finish editing for a similar amount of time. So yes, this is easily the best thing about Apple Silicon Macs. And because battery life has been so good for me with M1, across the last three years of ownership, I'm still actually at 88% battery off, which is very solid. And yes, obviously there has been a dip in endurance, but it still comfortably gets me through a day. So if you buy a new Apple Silicon Mac, you can be sure the battery life will stay impressive long term. So that's the comparison part of the video over, but now let's answer the questions I proposed at the beginning of the video. So number one, if you're cross shopping between these Macs, which one would I recommend? Well, that's where pricing comes into play because whilst the M3 MacBook Air is a fantastic product and does bring plenty of nice upgrades, it's also a lot more expensive. So here in the UK, the M3 Air starts at £1,100, whereas the M1 Air can be found for £750 and could potentially get even cheaper now that it's been discontinued. And I'm aware this is the case in other markets like the US. Best Buy, I believe, has the M1 MacBook Air for $750 very often. And remember, these are brand new M1 MacBook Airs. If you go refurbished or used, it can be found for even less. But even at $750 brand new, I just don't think the M3 MacBook Air does enough to justify spending $350 more because at the end of the day, the M1 Air offers the basics of what makes a great MacBook. It has stupendously good battery life, blazing fast performance, and rock solid reliability. Also, I'm sure many students are going to be buying these Macs and so for typical college use, the M1 Air is still more than fine. And you're better off spending those savings on a base iPad to accompany your MacBook or of course, external storage, which can come in handy. In fact, a part of me kind of wishes Apple kept the M1 Air in the range for around $700 or $800. That would be an insane deal, but I guess it's too good of a deal to directly offer on the Apple Store. Now, don't get me wrong, if you can justify it, go buy the M3 MacBook Air because it is a terrific machine and you'll enjoy using it, but the M1 easily offers the best bang for your buck. Really, availability might be the only issue because it's officially been discontinued, 
But tons of third party stores are still selling them and it's also available on Apple's refurbished store, that's where I got mine from. And it was basically brand new, you can watch my video regarding the Apple refurbished experience in the iCut above. Additionally, I do want to mention, if you want the new design for less, you don't have to buy the M3 MacBook Air because the very similar M2 model is also available for much less. Finally, for the second question I proposed about whether you should upgrade from M1 to M3, I would say no. Yes, the M3 model does offer nice perks like the new design, but I wouldn't say it's offering any must-have features since everything the M1 offers right now is still good enough and I'm sure most of you guys are still very happy with your M1 machines. In fact, in all this time I've used the M3 MacBook Air not once have I felt I can't go back to the M1 because the upgrades it offers are things I can live without to be honest, especially when I'm saving a lot of money by not upgrading. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and thank you for watching.